guys and welcome to our new painting video where we are talking about painting a sister superior. This is the limited edition miniature that was released for Warhammer Day. Um, and so we have started off where we've kept the miniature separate from the base. Um, and we have primed the base with the humbral uh, light brown I believe it is. Um, and then we're going to go over this with Xanadry Dust. So the reason we've um, kept this separate is it's just going to be easier to paint this base as it is um, and then add the miniature back on top afterwards. So we're going to go along here with quite a large brush and we're just going to cover the whole base with the Xanadry Dust. You don't have to worry about going into all the recesses necessarily. Um, as that mixed sort of look will make it look a little bit more natural. So once the base is completely coated with Xandri dust, we are then going to use Seraphim Sepia, which is the GW shade paint, and we are going to apply this quite liberally um, all over the base. So this now is where you want this to go into all the recesses, um, again, it doesn't matter with the base coat of this if it was particularly um, a thick coat that went into all the recesses because I find after this stage um, it will make it look a lot more natural, which is what we want to sort of create this sandstony uh, type effect that matches the box art for the model. So once we've let that fully dry, we're going to use Ushabti Bone and we're going to apply um, quite a heavy dry brush um, but we're going to build it up in stages so you've got to make sure this is absolutely bone dry um, using a hair dryer or something like that will uh, will help to speed up this process in between um, so we're going to focus mainly on um, hitting the extreme edges to start with so you can see I'm going for, like, for the edge of the step um, and then I'll work my way into the centre uh, and we also want to catch all the little vents that are around the, the base we want to make sure we catch all of those as well because that will just make um, the edge of the miniature pop when we've completely finished um, the surrounding trim of the base so you can see now after doing I've probably gone over the whole thing two or three times just very lightly um, but it's caught now all those details you can see all the cracks and the indentations um, and I've gone around the rim of the base with Abaddon Black and I've just gone just inside the vents I haven't actually painted the vents and that's just from the wash uh, so now we're going to do the roses that are on um, the bottom step and we're going to use Screamer Pink for this um, so you have to be a little bit careful with this because the way that the detail is pressed up against the steps and um, we're trying to paint this in a way that you're not going to need to go back and like touch anything up so uh, it's at this point you're going to have to take your time a little bit um, but make sure you cover the roses from all angles um, as the uh, the way that it's sculpted and moulded, you're gonna it, it stands proud from the steps. So you've got to make sure you catch it from all angles. So once those again are dry, we're just gonna do a wash with Drucci Violet. And again, we need to be careful with how we're applying this because we don't want to touch um, the rest of the steps or the base with this. So I'm going to use a smallish brush, smaller than, than normal, um, to shade just so I can be very direct with where it is. And then once we've done this, I'm just going to pick out a couple of the edges with Pink Horror just to pull it back out again um, from this shade. And so there you can see the flowers on the base are pretty much finished off. And so now we're going to go to work on the candles. Um, so for this we're going to use uh, Balthazar Gold, 
with a wash of Agrax Earth Shade because I'm trying to make this look almost like an old antique um, white, uh, sorry, not white, gold colour. Um, and the Agrax Earth Shade will take the shine away from the Balthazar Gold um, and it will tone the colour right down to allow us to add our dry brushes afterwards. So my Balthazar Gold here is, is quite thinned down. Um, as I like my metallic paints a little bit thinner than they normally come because they do tend to, to clog up so it just helps with applying this where we need to so we're going to go around both of like the candle stands and then give it a good wash of Agrax Earthshade. So you can see now the colour on them is quite dull but it still keeps that, that golden brown um, base colour and from here we're going to use Retributor Armour and then we're going to use a Scale 75 Speed Metal I believe it is um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly dry brush the edges of this um, and the Retributor Armour will bring up quite a nice um, antique gold finish to it now it will go over the, um, the earth shade really nicely and then we will do the speed metal. You'll have to be very, very fine with that, just again over the severe edges to make it look like it's been worn away. Um, and again, you could use any lighter GW silver. You don't have to use the scale 75s. It's just I prefer them because um, they are they have a better range of colour um, for the metallic. So that's just what I've decided to use um, for this. So you can see I'm just going all the way around, you don't have to worry about touching the candles at this point. Um, the way in which we're painting this, you can actually be quite sloppy um, as long as you're not touching the part you've just painted, uh, but anything you haven't painted yet, um, you can just go ahead and, and touch that on there, it's not a problem. So you can just about make out, it's quite light on the video, but um, just catching those edges brings that shine back. Um, and then with the speed metal, you make sure that you don't wash the brush um, in between using the Retributor armor. You can just go straight ahead. I put a little bit in your palette, um, take a bit on my brush. Again, like a normal dry brush, wipe most of it off. But it will just keep a little bit of that Retributor armor residue on the brush, um, and it will just help it transition a little easier so it's not quite so intense. And again, we're just going over the uh, the top trim for this a little bit more, not so much focusing on the legs. I'm just going around that top that top edge, and that'll just finish off that worn gold look for the candle holders. there we go so you can you can do as much or as little on that as you want you don't have to do as much as I've done um, but I think it just finishes off that detail on there quite nicely um, rather than it just being a piece of gold um, stuck onto the base um, so you can experiment with different colors um, with ever different type of golds that you want to do and so now we're going to go on to the candles we are going to use corn red and then we're going to wash with Karaberg crimson um, so again, this is where now you'll, you'll just have to be um, a little bit more precise about where you're applying the paint. Try not to touch that gold again, although there are slight wax drips that go onto the top tray of the candle holders, so you can just go down a little bit to make it look a little bit more natural, um, so it doesn't just like look like a red block stuck onto a gold uh, plinth. All the way around the candles here, again important so that we get all the edges um, just to, to block that colour right out on those candles. So once that's done and we have washed them, then that is how we're coming out with, with those colours. Uh, so now we're just going to add a little edge highlight with squig orange. 
and what we're going to do here is we're just going to catch the extreme edges of the candles, the top edges of the candles, um, and there's a couple of areas where it's um, been modelled to look like the wax is dripping down, so we will just do uh, a couple of lines following those, and it'll just help pull it out um, from when we do the flame in a second uh, with the yellows. So what I've done here then to start off the flame is I've just base coated um, the flames with Celestra Grey from Games Workshop uh, and then what we're going to do is use that as a base colour to apply Flash Gits Yellow on top. Um, so again you don't have to do this, um, it's, uh, it's just something that it just helps the, the brightness of the colour which I want quite a vivid yellow. And then we're going to use Corn Red and Rhinox Hide. Um, just as a very very light dry brush on the on the tips of the flames just to give it that effect of them actually burning um, almost as you know the the smoke that's going to come off uh, the flame so we're being very precise again here not to touch the red um, with the flash gets yellow and then we'll move on to the dry brushes so once those are all fully coated um, so what we're going to do is take a very very small brush and we're just going to catch the tip, this is with corn red, um, and it's just going to start to darken that tip up a little bit to again make it look like it's um, burning. I know that the, the actual picture on the box, um, they physically coloured that, um, but this sort of saves a bit of time and gives you a similar effect uh, and makes it look a little bit more realistic than just a, a piece of yellow sticking out from, uh, from these candles. So you can experiment with this again, you could, you could do black, um, we've chosen Rhinox Hide and Corn Red for this, um, obviously the red fits with the flame colour, um, but the Rhinox Hide still has enough of that red quality in it, um, so it doesn't move away from the colour too much. So at this point we're going to move onto the Rhinox Hide, so just the absolute extreme tips. And this is with a very small brush as well, so it seems a little bit weird um, to, to almost dry brush with a very fine tip. So don't use one of your uh, best edge highlighting brushes for this. And there you can see just the tips of those are nice and dark now. And it just makes the candles stand out a little bit more, adds a little bit more detail um, to them. And that pretty much is the base finished, so we can now move on to the Sister Superior herself. So what I've done here is I have primed the Sister with um, Scale 75 Surface Primer. Um, and any primer will do, um, but it's just quite a nice flat black colour. And we are going to dry brush the armour with Eshin Grey. So this is also another important reason as to why we've left the miniature off the base, because we can do this stage without worrying, um, touching the base or anything, or messing up any details, um, and then uh, we can stick the model to the base whilst we carry on doing um, the other effects. Now this is just a quicker way, instead of doing edge highlighting, um, you could choose to edge highlight this um, instead of dry brushing, but I found that doing this is a nice quick way, and actually there's enough sharp edges on the model um, that dry brushing is enough to uh, to just pull those, those highlights out of the model. So we're just making sure we turn the model every and which way to catch all those highlights. And there we have nice highlighted armour. 
So we've stuck the mi miniature to the base and we're going to start off by doing all the red areas. So we're going to use Mephiston red for this. So this includes the cape at the front of the model. Um, there's a separate cape to the rear and then the two upper sleeves um, where there's a little section on the front and obviously round to the back that we want to catch with that. Um, so we're going to go uh, all the way with those. You might have to do a couple of coats uh, with the Mephiston Red as it is a little bit thinner than the other paints. And then we will wash with Agrax Earthshade. So we've applied a wash of Agrax Earthshade to the red areas and you can still see here that it's still wet. So whilst we're waiting for that to dry we can actually move on to a separate stage. This is something I do quite a lot when I'm painting. And so areas that are furthest away from the red in this case for the model are the silver sections. So there's quite a lot of areas to, to hit for this but some of them are quite subtle. So we're going to use Lead Belcher from GW again and we're going to obviously target the bolt gun. Um, we are going to target the two grenades that are on her front belt pack. Um, the one icon that's on her uh, by her chest plate. Um, then we have the couple of areas that are around the trim around the shoulder pads. Um, there's a few bits by her respirator and there's a couple of bits on the top of the shoulder pad as well. So you can see a little bit better now where we've done, you can see all the areas, the edges of the shoulder pad, the buttons as well that are on the back. And we've done all those with lead belcher. So by this point now we're hoping that all the red areas are dry. Again if they're not you can use a um, hairdryer just to speed it up. In this case they weren't fully dry so I'm going to apply a wash to all the silver areas now using non oil. So again using just a slightly smaller brush than I normally would so I can be a bit more precise with how the wash goes on and we're just going to apply as usual pulling any excess from some of the pulled up areas getting a nice even coat on the so now that that is fully dry we're going to go back to the red we're going to fill in a little bit with Mephiston red and then we're going to add a couple of highlights with Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider red so we're going to use Mephiston red just to fill in um, some of the wider spaces on the capes um, that we don't want those to be shaded. So this is just the reverse of doing um, like a specific shade to a certain area. We could have shaded just the recesses rather than the whole thing, um, but I quite like this effect um, as it means that it does change the tone of the red slightly. And then we're going to add just a very fine edge highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet and then on top of that we're going to do Wild Rider Red. So the main thing we're focusing on is we're trying to pull out the folds, um, the, the top folds of the the capes uh, and it's just to give it that bit more of a highlighted 3D effect. It's important as well not to forget the the upper sleeves as well especially the uh, the front portion because they're not quite as visible as the back. So at this point now we're using Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm just going to be applying as straight a line as I can uh, down the hard edge of those folds on the front and along the side of the cape. So 
taking extra care not to touch any of the black armour, so really take your time with this. And there you can see now the cape and the sleeves nicely highlighted, just pulls out those edges, certainly makes the back section uh, look a lot better and it pulls it out nicely from that black uh, armour. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to scale 75 thrash metal and we're going to go back over some of those silver sections which by now were definitely dried from the null oil wash and we're just going to do a very light dry brush. So I wanted to try and keep the metal looking quite dark um, and drab. Again, I didn't want it to be too vibrant on this because it would stand out too much from the black. Um, so it, we're only doing a very, very faint highlight. Um, it, all it's really doing is it's bringing the shine back up um, on the metal rather than adding like an extra colour that normally you find the dry brushes or edge highlights do. making sure to catch the grenades at the front, the icon, the little bits of piping and of course the edges of the shoulder pad. And you can just see that that shininess and the light is just returning to those areas a little bit from where it dulled down from the null oil shade. So making sure we catch all those areas once that is done then that should be all of the silver sections finished again you can go as far with this as you want you could do another highlight if you wanted to um, but we're just going to stop as far as that's concerned and we're going to move on to the gold sections so we're going to do a similar effect that we did to the candle holders on the base um, starting with balthazar gold um, but we're going to try and make this look a slightly different shade of gold so it stands out enough um, from the two whilst also keeping that subdued ancient metal look. Um, and we're doing a lot of the iconography on this. Um, she's actually she's holding an icon um, and there's a couple on her back as well and the fleur de lis on her um, backpack. Um, so making sure we catch all those. Again, a couple of coats you might need for this before we wash it with Reitland Flesh Shade. So the important thing to note with this is you're washing it with the Reitland Flesh Shade Gloss paint because we do want this to remain shiny. We want this to look like it has been a little bit more of a regal, valuable gold. And then we're going to go back over it with Retributor Armour and the Scale 75 Speed Metal like we did with the base um, but we're going to be a little bit lighter with the speed metal and a little bit heavier with the retributor armor so you can see again that brightness just returning to the gold areas it's just making it stand out against that black and the red And again, when it comes to adding the speed metal, we don't want to wash our brush. Just put a little bit into a palette or onto a, um, a wet palette or something um, and wash most of it off. And then uh, you'll get that, still that little bit of gold underneath um, the silver and it will just help it blend that a little bit better. to the flesh 
Um, with this model, there's not much of this to do. It's purely the face. We're going to use Cadian Flesh Tone and then Rightland Flesh Shade and then we're going to do a little bit of a highlight with Kislev Flesh. So, yeah, we've only got the face to do for this. Um, and so we're just going to go straight in and cover that face with Cadian Flesh Tone. Again, you might need a couple of coats with this because it is quite a thin paint. And we need to get right up underneath the hairline as there is a um, the way they've modelled the hair. Um, you want to make sure that it goes right up and we'll paint back over it with the, the white when we come to do the hair. Otherwise, if you don't, you might get a bit of uh, black paint under there still from the primer. Okay, so you can see now we've washed it as well with Reitland Flesh Shade, so it's darkened that skin tone a little bit. Uh, we're actually going to go back in with Cadian Flesh Tone first, uh, and then Kislev Flesh. Um, and like we did with the, um, with the red on the robes, we're just going to um, block that colour back in a little bit with the, uh, with the Cadian Flesh Tone. We're going to go across the nose, uh, just above the eyes, onto the cheeks and the jawline. Um, and it'll just bring that colour back out so that uh, it's not quite so dark. And then we'll add a highlight, same areas with Kislev Flesh, again just onto the nose, just above the eye, uh, and onto the cheeks. With the Kislev Flesh though, we're just going to add um, like an edge highlight, like a single line. Um, again, just to pull the, the edges out and bring the skin uh, details away from the hair and the armour plating that are around it otherwise it could get uh, lost amongst those details. flesh is done we're going to move on to the hair and the other white sections of the model so for this we're going to use Celestra Grey and then Ulfling Grey and then we'll highlight with white scar so we never really use white um, just because it's hard you can't highlight it then so by using grey um, we can still use the white colour to edge highlight so we're going to do the hair and we're going to do the shoulder pads um, there's insignias on both shoulder pads and we're going to do the trim um, on the back of the robes that are on the sleeves um, they do have a white trim to them um, following the artwork uh, on the box and so again you might have to do a couple of coats with this just be very careful not to touch any of the black armour So there you can see we've done Celestial Grey and the Ulfwin Grey on top and we've just done a little edge highlight around the, uh, the trim around the back uh, and onto the hair and that stands out now nicely and you can still see that flesh um, has worked nicely uh, amongst the hair. So now we are going to go on to the final stages. So we're going to do all of the... Um, Purity seals that are on the, the model. Um, we're going to use Zandri Dust um, for those as a base colour. Then we're going to use a light wash, um, the light ink shade by Army Painter, and then just use a Shabti Bone to pick out the edges of those again. Um, so we're going to make sure we catch all those all around the miniature, and we'll move on to the final stages. So once that is done, washed and highlighted, we will do the actual seals themselves and we're going to just do a simple Screamer Pink base coat and a wash of Drucci Violet 
Um, I haven't applied a highlight to these, but you could. You could use pink horror again, or a um, more violet or purple colour if you wanted to, but I've just kept it nice and simple so they look like dark melted wax. And the final section then to move on to is the leather. So the only area that we've got on this miniature is the belt. Um, so there's the belt strap and the couple of pouches and things that are attached to that. Um, and I've actually done the uh, the handle of the bolt gun as well, um, just to add a little bit of a, a change in color for the gun itself. Um, so we're using GW's Morn Fang Brown for this and then we're going to wash it with Agrax Earthshade and then after that we're going to use Scrag Brown just as an edge highlight on it. So you can see here we're just going to pull out the edges with Scrag Brown. Just those extreme edges. Again with this we're just going almost from one side, just catching the top We'll just finish off that leathery look on the belt.